Big thanks to Napoleon Grills for sponsoring this episode. The biggest problem in the world is tough meat. I'm not kidding you. Just go back to the Neanderthalers. They killed a big giant mammoth and wanted to eat it. But then they figured out they couldn't just eat the mammoth. I don't know, do you know Neanderthalers? Hagrid. Hagrid? No, that's Hagrid. He's magic. He knows his way with animals. Serious note though, it was a big problem, but then People invented fires. And me, personally, as a pitmaster, I love this part. They started and used a new method to them to make it tender and soft. And nowadays, this method is used all over the world to do exactly the same thing. Do the people are going to believe me as a real, authentic, uh, like, uh, natural scientist? Welcome to Jurassic Park. This is what we know as slices of the flat iron steak. Just think about this thing in the middle being gone and then just left with this steak. It is one of the toughest meat that there is on a cow. And the reason for that is the big silver skin that sits in the middle and the big silver skin that sits right here under the fat cap. Now this is a beautiful version of it because it comes from a black Angus cow that has been grazing in nature reserves and then has been fed to get it nice and fatty. You know, the real good intramuscular fat that's gonna bring us a lot of flavor. With my chef knife, I'm gonna cut up the meat into cubes. That's about 700 grams of beef. Then I'm gonna take three garlic cloves and slice them up, followed by two white onions, a red bell pepper, a yellow bell pepper, two Roma tomatoes, and finally, two potatoes. And now I have all my ingredients prepared, so it's time to fire up the Napoleon grill. I'm going to start up my side burner, the sizzle zone. A little bit of gas, wait for five seconds, and then hit ignition. Because these Neanderthalers and people that came after them and started cooking with fire, they discovered some amazing things. It's like we're getting the air fry, but bigger. You like air fries? But it's bigger. I'm gonna put on a cast iron pan. This is something that my grandma used, and I'm super proud of it because this thing is called a Dutch oven. Everybody in the world uses a Dutch oven, something from the Netherlands. Neanderthalers had clay pots. We're using cast iron pots. It came like steam age. That's when we started using these things. These are absolutely freaking amazing. And these are the tools and the method that we took from the past, improved on it, and now we have it. And the recipe that I'm making is Mexican guisada. And that's exactly the same thing that my grandmother made. Stovepotje in the Netherlands. Exactly the same thing. Exactly the same ingredients, exactly the same tools. Every country has their own version of it. We, we invented it. We, we are direct descendants of the Neanderthalers. It's hot now. I like to cook with butter because I'm Dutch. I'm gonna use around 50 grams of butter and melt it in the pan. You can see the pan is hot. So what I gotta do is I, I immediately need to add the beef. I'm gonna brown the outside of the beef. It's gonna leave a beautiful crust. It's gonna render down the fat on the beef. Basically, we're creating flavor. Crust, flavor, and all in the cast iron pan. Once the meat is brown, which is an important step by itself, then the order in which I'm going to add the rest of the ingredients is important as well. So I'm gonna start with garlic and onion, and I'll show you what I mean. The garlic and onion need to soften up, and they need a few minutes to get the opportunity really break down the structure in the onion and the garlic. Therefore, they need a little bit more time than the rest of the ingredients. And before I can continue adding the rest of the ingredients, I'm gonna add flour, because I'm gonna use the fat and flavor in this pan to create a roux, because that white flour needs to be cooked first. Otherwise, you're gonna have a really floury flavor in your beef stew. Four tablespoons will do the job, and that flour really needs to brown up a little bit. And now you already know about the two most important parts of making a good beef stew. And this technique is adopted worldwide. Toast your flour so it's fully cooked. Make sure you got brown beef to add loads and loads of flavor. And once you got that done, you're going to add beef stock. Concentrated without salt, because I wanna be able to control the flavor and be able to add salt later to this pan. I'm gonna stir this and you will see that that beef broth will turn into a gravy. While this is simmering, I'm gonna add the bell peppers, the tomatoes, and the potatoes. And this needs to stew 
for at least two and a half hours at a low temperature. Of course, I'm going to put the lid on to conserve as much moisture in the pan as I can. But when the stew thickens in too much, I need to add more water to it to keep the consistency just right. In the meantime, I'm gonna show you how to make a tortilla at home. It starts with three cups of all-purpose flour, a tablespoon of baking powder, and a quarter cup of lard which I'm never short of because this lard is left over from a shallow fry that I did before and now I can use it to make my tortilla with. And that's better than throwing away because it's already seasoned from the fry and now I get to add that flavor to my tortillas. I'm gonna need about three quarters and I'm gonna go in with my hands and I'm gonna squeeze that lard working it into the flour creating little flakes of lard. And when the flour looks like this a little bit of kogelig when it's grainy. Then it's time to start adding water. Now this recipe requires about a cup of water. I'm gonna start with a little bit and then work it in. And that's the best way to do it because then you will easily figure out how much water you're actually gonna need instead of dumping it all in at once. And when you think you got the measurements almost perfect, just throw everything on the table and then start kneading the dough. Look at how beautiful this dough is starting to turn out. And you see how easy it is. I'm just using my wrist and I'm rolling it around with my weight. And I weigh quite a lot. So, really? yeah, I'm around 90 kilograms. Between 93 and 94. Look at the dough, how smooth it became in structure. The warmth of my hand is making it really nice dough. I'm not looking for a fluffy dough. I'm looking for tortilla dough. Okay, that joke. Yeah. That was a good joke. Come on. Take a golf ball size of dough, spread it out, roll it out, make sure it's nice and round, and then bake it on a cast iron pan on your grill when it's nice and hot. And it should be nice and fluffy just like this. And it's all about the layered texture of these flaky bits of beef tallow. Oh, almost done. Because the last step in the cooking process is to bring this stew up to flavor. And what I mean is just add some salt to it and some cumin. And then your stew looks like this. Now this time it's guisada, which is Mexican for beef stew. In Dutch, we call it a stovepotje. And it's basically all the same. Made in a pot, cooked for a long, long time and keeping in mind to building up those flavors. Just let time do its job. And then finish it off strong with a little bit of seasoning and homemade tortillas. And I'm gonna load it up. Oh, ho, ho, ho. look at that. Let's give this a try. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's so good. The old lard that I use that makes the tortillas extra flavorful, rich and creamy, filled with vegetables and the tomatoes. Ah, mm. There's only one thing you need to do, and that's do some shopping so you can make this yourself. Eigenlijk wil ik het dus nu gewoon niet delen. Hè? Ik weet dat het heel erg is als ik zoiets maar Ik kook dat graag voor andere mensen, maar nu wil ik, wil ik gewoon niet. Dat wil ik eigenlijk gewoon houden zelf. 